what is the politics of coastal karnataka uh, the the sang parivar in coastal karnataka has shaped the bjp's policies in the last 5 years the bjp state chief narin kumar katil in the last few months he has said that roads drains these are all small issues what is the bajrang dal the hijab agitations started in a government college in udupi where was the congress's youth wing nsui in all of this two different uh, ideas within the bjp and both ideas are you know jostling for position hello and welcome to yet another episode of tnm poll watch in this episode we are going to talk about the coastal karnataka region which is also known as bjp's hindutva laboratory to talk about this i have with me prajwal bhat uh, who has extensively reported from uh, uh, the coastal karnataka region who also heads uh, the bengaluru bureau of uh, tnm prajwal thank you so much for talking to us uh, tell us why coastal karnataka is so important for the bjp well uh, simply put if the bjp wants to come back to power in the state win a majority again in the state then it would do well to repeat its performance in coastal karnataka uh, the last time around when the bjp was the single largest party in karnataka when uh, even though it did not form the majority government immediately uh, it did uh, win 104 seats so um uh, it it swept the coastal karnataka region so in the three districts that we call coastal karnataka dakshina kannada udupi and uttara kannada bjp won a majority of the seats i think in the 19 seats that come in this mm. region the bjp won 16 of them so if we are looking at bjp coming back to power in the state then the bjp will hope to of course make gains in other regions in the state but also retain the dominance that it had in the coastal karnataka region and if you remember this is also the place where the bjp or the jansang it was as it was called then first won an election in karnataka it is a udupi municipality election where the jansang won uh, in 1968 and if you cast your mind even further back then uh, this is the place where uh, uh, the, an rss worker came Uh, uh, in the 1940s for the first time so the first unit of rss was established in uh, coastal in this, karnataka in this region, region. karnataka yeah so if we are looking at all these factors then the bjp i think is looking at the coastal karnataka region and consolidating its position there as an important pillar in its bid to return to power in karnataka and also uh, talking about uh, coastal karnataka uh, just explain to our viewers uh, the kind of politics it has uh, because uh, every other region in karnataka has its own politics own issues as far as coastal karnataka is concerned what is the politics of coastal karnataka what are the key issues that dominate this election so the key issues that should dominate every election as far as i feel should be the development of the infrastructure and the things we see around us but sadly with coastal karnataka we keep going back to this idea of religious polarization if you see that the bjp state chief narin kumar katil in the last few months he has said that roads drains these are all small issues love jihad is the priority that they should be addressing so in this region communal polarization is at its highest in karnataka and uh, in the, it is of course expected to play a role in the upcoming elections as well uh, it it is in this region that in 2022 just a year ago that landmark protests took place over the hijab and the anti hijab agitations by uh, students you know who were wearing saffron shawls and opposing their hijab wearing classmates took place there was also the issue of you know muslim traders excluded from temple fairs uh, in 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 this region some kind of unofficial economic ban yeah so the economic boycott of uh, muslim traders also took place so uh, if you look at the election issues that are dominating the conversations again then it impossible to ignore the communal polarization that has been seen in this region not just in the last 10 years not just in the recent past but for decades now so uh, there is a book written on communalism by k faniraj and g rajshekar which talks about the fact that uh, the suratkal riots in 1998 was uh, one of the first incidents uh, uh, that, that that you know paved the way for a of the frequent communal incidents that we see in this part of the state so it was after the suratkal riots that uh, incidents of uh, communal violence became more and more frequent and by the mid 2000s that it had become you know a case of one incident every week so now we've reached a point where there are incidents almost every other day many of which don't reach the stage of police inquiry fir and a uh, investigation open so it's all, it's it's all become normal there or it's all being normalized there uh, 
in coastal Karnataka, all these, uh, you know, polarizing incidents because yeah. it's happening in such frequency that uh, neither the law enforcing agencies are taking it seriously nor the public is concerned about it. At least in the time that I have been a reporter with the News Minute and covering this region, there have been countless incidents that we have come across where people are taken to police stations simply for forming an interfaith friendship, for simply mingling with other communities, for simply, you know, uh, 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 for the for trading of cattle. So this is this is where also I think uh, the the Sangh Parivar in coastal Karnataka has shaped the BJP's policies in the last five years. If you see that the BJP has brought in an anti-cattle slaughter law, the BJP has brought in an anti-conversion law. The BJP has also been talking about more stringent laws governing against what it calls love jihad. So this is all a part of the conversation that has been raised in coastal Karnataka a long time ago. So if you look back in the last 15 years, there has been the pub attack, hmm. there has been the church attacks, there has been the homestay attack. These are all these incidents in coastal Karnataka where uh, Hindutva groups uh, have you know, uh, uh, resorted to violence uh, in the name of upholding Indian culture or in the name of you know, uh, going against uh, 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 what they perceive to be communal forces. So the, we have to talk about the fact that uh, we are yet again at an election when uh, communal polarization is a hot topic in coastal Karnataka, especially given that uh, the Congress has promised to, you know, hinted at the possibility of a ban against the Bajrangal. Mm -hmm. So the Bajrangal has come out strongly saying that, you know, if you see that in the last few days, the uh, the the messaging from Sangh Parivar workers in coastal Karnataka has been that you know uh, the, that that the Bajrangal cannot be equated to the PFI. Hmm. So that has also become an election conversation ahead of May okay. 10. Uh, I want to talk about it extensively about uh, the Bajrangal, the role of Bajrangal in those areas. But before that, uh, I want to ask you about uh, uh, you know Nalin Kumar Katil. Like we were talking about uh, Nalin Kumar Katil. Is there some sort of confusion? Uh, there uh, that is prevailing in the coastal Karnataka region. Yeah, so as I said, uh, Nalin Kumar Katil is the BJP state president and also he is the one who, you know, said that uh, roads and drains are small issues and love jihad should be the priority. And if you see in the last few years... But the BJP's top leadership talks about uh, development, double engine sarkar, uh, progress, Jal Jeevan Mission and various other central government schemes. But uh, the state BJP chief differs. Yes, the state BJP chief is talking the language of Sangh Parivar activists in coastal Karnataka. But that does not mean that is popular mm -hmm. among these activists. So even though if you look back at the headlines that he's created, if you look back at the statements and quotes that is given, you will see that he's been talking about Lab Jihad, you've been talking about Hindutva. But for some reason, he is very very unpopular among the Sangh Parivar members. So if you talk, sit across and talk to uh, you know uh, Hindutva workers in Udupi or Dakshina Kannada, you will see that they are heading into this election when the BJP's own state chief is at, a, at his most unpopular self. Hmm. And that you know the, the reasons for this also stem from the fact that he is an MP who emerged in 2009, who became the Dakshina Kannada MP. Uh, uh, one of the first things uh, that, 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 that works against him is the pump well flyover, which construction for which began in 2009 and ended only in 2020. Mm -hmm. So it is, uh, it is clear, I guess, that you know, his priorities don't lie in development, that roads and drains are not important to him because the pump well flyover has been the butt of jokes in Mangalore and Udupi for the longest time when it was being constructed. Mm. And even after its construction, when flooding and you know other kind of infrastructure problems have continuously derided the progress of you know building this flyover in Mangalore. So in a way, Nalin Kumar has uh, 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 been unpopular for a very long time. But we got a glimpse of this. We got a, a sort of evidence for this. Evidence for this presented itself in July 2022, hmm. when a BJP youth worker, Pravin Nettaru, was killed. Uh, uh, and the main accused in the case is an SDPI uh, uh, member and also somebody that the SDPI is fielding as a yeah, candidate. Yeah, who is contesting Shafi in this election. Yeah. Yeah? Mm -hmm. So that, that is also something that should be condemned. But here we had a BJP state chief, Nalin Kumar Katil, being opposed by Sangh Parivar activists. Mm -hmm. So Hindutva activists actually stopped the BJP state chief's car and violently shook it. Mm -hmm. It was 
seen by many analysts as a way of sending a message across to Narendra Kumar Katil and the high command of the BJP that they want the kind of changes to be made in the BJP structure in Kosovo. That they are not happy with him or uh, they, are, they they don't support what he says or what he does. Uh, also, you know, is there uh, some sort of resentment within the Sangh Parivar? in coastal Karnataka because uh, uh, we could see uh, Sri Ram Sene contesting against the BJP and there are al also a lot of other uh, activists uh, who belong to the Hindutva family contesting against uh, the BJP. So the internal rebellion that we saw in July 2022 when you know uh, Pravin Nataru was killed, it has continued uh, you know in, in the run up to the elections as well. So now we have Karkala and Puttur, which have become very interesting uh, election contests. Yeah, political fights because of the fact that uh, uh, the BJP is facing an internal rebellion in both places. Yeah. And uh, Arun Kumar Puttila and uh, the most recognizable Hindutva face of Karnataka, Pramod Mutalik, are both contesting against uh, BJP candidates. Uh, and uh, uh, the BJP is now, uh, I wouldn't say that you know uh, this is a major problem because every time there is an election you will see that uh, mm. there is some sort of disc disgruntlement and the BJP finds a way to pacify them and you will always maybe before elections or after elections if they win they will take them back or something like that correct and also it is not a case where it is going to shift votes in my opinion from my conversations it is not a case where you will see that uh, Hindutva workers are now going to you know, uh, go away from the BJP fold. You just have two different uh, ideas within the BJP and both ideas are, you know, jostling for position. So what the BJP has done in the elections this time around is change its winning formula in coastal Karnataka. If you see that four of the five candidates in Udupi have been replaced. And uh, similarly, there has been wholesale changes made to the BJP candidature list in Dakshina Kannada and Uttara Kannada. So in Udupi, for example, Raghupati Bhatt, who epitomizes the BJP's inclusive approach. Uh, this BJP always has, uh, uh, you know, I, I say that in Kosil Karnataka it has twin appeal. One is that the BJP appeals to the Hindutva side and the other is an inclusive approach on socio-economic themes. So the, uh, the candidate that they've replaced, Raghupati Bhatt, I think, you know, personifies the BJP's inclusive approach and instead they've gone for Yashpal Suvarna, mm. who is very popular among Sangh Parivar activists in Udupi. So similarly, the BJP has fielded an RSS Pracharik Gururaj Gantihode in uh, Bindur constituency. Mm. So similarly, the BJP has been, you know, uh, uh, finding ways to uh, make changes to this winning formula and uh, infuse new blood uh, in the party in this, this part of the state. So it remains to be seen whether the BJP's changes uh, work in their favor and, you know, uh, help them sweep this part of the uh, state again because it becomes an important cornerstone to their bid to come back to power in the state. Okay. And also, uh, you know, how is the civil society reacting to the continuous uh, bid to polarize coastal Karnataka, the kind of issues that we have been seeing or reporting? Uh, what has been the response of the common man there? Are they accepting it or how do they see this? So the response of the common man has, in my opinion, been mostly a deafening silence. And this extends not just uh, to, you know, civil society activists, but also to the Congress party. Mm -hmm. For instance, I spoke to you about the kind of polarizing incidents that have taken place in the last year alone. We had the hijab and anti-hijab agitations. We had the exclusion of Muslims in temple fairs across coastal Karnataka. And we had a number of incidents that kind of talked about, you know, the polarization that we have seen in coastal Karnataka. The Congress was absent or missing in most of these cases. Which is very worrying, right? Being a principal opposition party, the Congress should come up with their, their own stand on these issues. But this is something that I have also been hearing from uh, uh, a lot of people uh, whom I have been talking to that on most crucial issues, when it comes to communal politics or when it comes to polarization, the Congress maintains a stoic silence on these issues. So the Congress has done this consistently in the recent past in coastal Karnataka, where it simply is no longer engaging, you know, in in issues of communal violence. Or so trying to create the same balance of, uh, you know, trying to explain to the people that whether this is the right kind of politics that they want or they don't want. What, what exactly is the Congress's role in that? So if you see that the hijab agitations started in a government college in Udupi 
and and then it spread to other parts of the state and of course uh, uh, hijab was worn in many colleges in karnataka prior to this agitation and now that we have seen that the bjp has responded in force to this protest the there has been kind of like a blanket order that has come across that hijab should be banned from uh, at least in government institutions it's banned and there are a few private muslim institutions that still continue to allow the hijab now where was the congress's youth wing nsui in all of this hmm. if you see that the abvp and all of the sang parivar affiliates they were all continuously working to ensure that you know uh, students in colleges were opposing their hijab wearing classmates and wearing the saffron shawl so where was this opposing force or you know what is the opposing force anymore so if the congress is going to stay away from issues of communalization then it is going to create a, a void or a gap where you just don't have anybody standing up to uh, uh, these kind of forces and uh, uh, apart from that uh, you know about the minorities who are living in uh, coastal karnataka region you may have been interacting with them what is their uh, you know what what is their thought process what are they thinking because like you said that these kind of instances are happening on a daily basis now it's almost uh, it's being normalized and uh, the general uh, you know uh, society is not bothered about these incidents one or two people are bothered and they issue statements or they oppose this uh, what has been the sense among the minority community who are living in the coastal karnataka region so i would like to also point out that the sdpi the social democratic party of india which fielded very few candidates in the 2018 election is now fielding 19 candidates in coastal mm. karnataka so how is it it's very interesting to see that a, a, a political party whose parent organization is banned mm. whose parent organization that the union government says is linked to terror groups is now you know uh, expanding its base uh, base in and, 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 and contesting in more 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 constancy and do you see that this is because of uh, the constant polarization that has been happening on one side there is other kind of polarization that is happening on the other side as well well the sdpi says that they are tired of both the congress and the bjp and uh, but the congress says that this is going to affect their vote hmm. at the end of the day hmm. so i don't think that it is going to be easy for the congress to overhaul you know the the election fights in this region and uh, win over win the over support. the support uh, of the people it remains to be seen whether the congress is able to do that but uh, because of the fact that the bjp has fielded new candidates in many places and because of the fact that the bjp is facing an internal rebellion uh, within its ranks it has made this region also an interesting election contest okay like you said earlier that the congress has been absent when it comes to taking on issues of uh, you know communalization or uh, talking about uh, uh, the the politics of polarization that is happening in this region perhaps that was one of the reasons why they came up uh, with something like uh, banning the bajrang dal or like taking act strong action against the bajrang dal in their election manifesto maybe sending across a clear message to the minority community to consolidate their votes or probably so, this this could be one of the reasons well the uh, congress has hinted at the possibility of a ban against the bajrang dal uh, but uh, what is the bajrang dal it's a bajrang dal is something that uh, is an organization a youth movement that was born out of the ram janmabhoomi agitations so now in karnataka at least the, the, the bajrang dal accepted responsibility for the 2008 church attacks, church attacks. Mm -hmm. and bajrang dal members were also accused and convicted in two of the you know uh, cases of communal violence just in the last year so when uh, pravin nettaru a bjp youth worker was killed in july 2022 in dakshina kannada two muslim men mohammad mm -hmm. fazil and uh, uh, masood were also killed in the same district and bajrang dal members were the ones who were accused and arrested in this case so uh, the congress has Uh, taken a firm stance and hinted at the possibility of banning the bajrang dal for the, for the very first time and uh, this has also set off a response among sang sang parivar members and bjp workers in coastal karnataka who are rallying behind the prime minister's remarks mm -hmm. from yesterday that uh, you know bajrangi and bajrang dal is a part of this land and how you know they they, they are evoking an emotional response uh, from its workers saying that how can how dare they they ban this organization 
So this has also affected uh, the elections mainly in coastal Karnataka. Now the Congress is extremely worried that uh, uh, in, in, an, in an environment uh, that they live in right now, that this could swing the voters, especially the, the floating voters, fence sitters, yes, or the and uh, eventually uh, affect the Congress in the election in a big way. Do you think that will happen? So we are less than a week away from the elections, and uh, we are yet to see any kind of strong indication that this particular party is coming to power in Karnataka. So I would say that we'll have to wait and see. Especially the election fights in coastal Karnataka seem very interesting this time. So there, uh, Prajwal, but telling us that. Uh, the fight for Karnataka, particularly in the coastal Karnataka region, has become interesting. Uh, so we will wait for the results till then. We will uh, bring you all the ground reports and all the developments uh, from Karnataka this election season. And uh, do follow our work on our website, uh, thenewsminute.com and also become a member of the News Minute and support independent journalism.